If you have ever worked in graphic design, you will know the importance of borders and similar to website design. Borders give structure. It just group things together and it gives a cohesive effect when you put a lot of elements in a certain column. I want to say though at the beginning is that you can do a lot in website design without borders. We use things like backgrounds and negative space or often referred to as white space. So borders are not that common and they should be used sparingly. In the example that we have here in front of us, you can see these four packages available and they have a very nice, thin, subtle border around them just to give them a little bit of structure. Another example where we use borders is when we want to highlight something. You can see that these columns all have a subtle border around them. And then this one, which we want to draw the visitor's eye towards to, has a premium border, a nice blue, a bright border around it and also thicker than the others. And this is one of the effects where we use borders. You already see here with the buttons, and if we look down here at this one, this is a very common feature in website design to use borders within buttons. We use it all the time like this, especially then when you hover over it, then the button will bring in some background effect or like in this case, it will actually remove it. And also a very nice way of how to use borders. And then very common that you find borders when we are working with fields, like in the form field, or we work with accordions and tabs, those kind of things where you need the structure of a border to give an idea of where everything is laid out on your page. Let's look then at borders and how you work with them within Brizzy. And I've got these three columns here. Now, already you can see there's a nice border here that we have applied to this button. For these elements, you will find the border setting slider within their settings. And it's a very simple setting that you can apply more thickness to it, or you can reduce it. You can even take it away, of course. And one thing that we like to apply to borders are corners. Ah, you see nice rounded corners. So check out for these, you will find them in the icons. You will find them here in the button. You will find it in the video player, and you will also find it in the map, all the border options available for those elements. In most cases though, you will use the border when you're working with a row or a column. I want to put a border around this column, making this the big feature to which I want to draw the visitor's attention to. I go to the column settings, which you will access by going up here when you see the blue bounding box, click on that. And then up here, the first question will be is, where is the border setting? Well, we group it within the colors. So you have to go over to colors, click on that, and you will see already you've got three options up here, overlay border and shadow, and we'll be working with the border. So click on border. Here you have it at solid. And if you click on the drop down, you can choose dashed. You can have dotted. And of course, most of the time we're going to work with solid lines. Next up, you can change the color. You with the selector, you can move through the colors. You can shift the U over here. Let's make it brighter so it has bigger impact. And if you think something is a little too strong, you can grab the opacity slider on the right and reduce it so it's not that invasive. For this one, let's put it on this color over there. I'll swatch over here and we reduce it to around 75%. The size of the border is determined here next to size and it's currently set at four pixels. You can change it in two ways. I click in it and then use the up and down arrow keys on my keyboard. So if I want to have a border thickness of one pixel, I will reduce it to one. So with the down arrow key, I just press down all the way until I get to one. And if I wanted more, let's say around 10 pixels, I just increase it up to 10. On the other hand, if you know how many pixels, you can just double click in there to select the value and type in the one that you want to use. In this case, three pixels, right? Another feature next to it, you see the little chain link icon. This de-links all the sides. So once I click on it, you will see that the sides have now been decoupled and you can work with them individually. So if I want the top maybe to have 10 for whatever reason, and I want to have the bottom for another 10, I can type them in manually or work with the arrow keys up and down. And great feature to work with the borders. Remember that borders also have a hover state. 
the hover state will copy all the settings that you've done in the default state. So make sure you do everything in the normal view first, and then you hop on over into the hover state by clicking on this little label here. Now you can make other changes. So for example, if I want to decrease the top now, I can put it back at three and the bottom at three. So if we go back to the default view and I hover over it, it will apply this kind of effect if that is what you are after. And that's everything you do with the borders here. This is for columns and for rows. One thing to note that when you want to bring in rounded corners, that is done within the more settings of the column. Go over here to settings, choose more settings, and you will see corner appear here. You can keep them all linked. So if I grab it and I drag it, you will see they all go nicely round, makes a nice little card, draws the attention to it, or you can delink them. And now you can have this kind of effect, right? Very nice. Looks good, right? And that's borders. So one thing I just want to draw your attention to when it comes to borders, it's similar to any kind of padding. And that is that you have to apply enough negative space when you are working with a column or any layout. That is especially true when you go into responsive view. I'm going to put this page in mobile view, and then you can see immediately here, we have this border very slightly there. But look at this layout. Everything is just squashed together. The moment you do this, the entire layout and design goes to waste because it just doesn't look aesthetically pleasing. And the easiest way to fix this is to apply padding from your border to your content. Go to your column, click on it, go to settings, and then under padding, I'm just going to link them and then let's give it around 20. Oh, let's make it more around, what is this, 33. It looks good for me. And just by applying that negative space on the sides, the border is more distanced from your content. It just gives it a better grouping and a better feeling. So always go and check whether in your mobile and tablet views and make sure you have enough negative space between the content within a column and your borders. Use your borders wisely, use them to make your site look good, and use them sparingly. For more tutorials on Brizzy, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also for some nice conversation, join us on the Facebook community and check out our blog at brizzy.io.